You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 191. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Porterfield, and today we're shaking things up. This episode is going to be very different than all of my other episodes, and I like to change things up a bit, and I hope you really like this format. So here's the deal. I get a lot of questions about my routine inside my business. And I've talked about my daily routine on many of my different podcasts. So on episode number 177, it was called How to Design Your Ideal Week with Michael Hyatt. I talked about how I set up my day and how I set up my week. So I got really specific on that episode. And in episode number 122 called Get Your Content House in Order, I talked about my content routine, how I create content. I even talked about something that I call tiger time in episode number 102, which was all about how to create content rituals to get more done. So content is my thing. That's how I spend most of my time. So I've talked about a lot of that. However, I've never taken you behind the scenes on a day-to-day basis. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this episode. If you're anything like me, you love to see behind the curtain. Like what's really happening? How is it really all going down? And so that's why I'm excited about this episode because it truly is a look behind the curtain. Now, I'll be taking you through my upcoming week on a day-to-day basis. So in the morning, I'll be recording a short segment to tell you about what the day is supposed to look like. And in the evening, I'm gonna wrap things up, jump on the mic again, and tell you about how the day actually happened, like what worked, what didn't work, and all that good stuff in between. Now, you'll hear me talk about my struggle with making time for Hobie when he's home from the fire station. You'll hear me talk about how I was totally in the flow and also how I couldn't get it together and nothing worked and I just wanted to sit on the couch and watch TV all day. Yeah, you're going to get the good, bad, and ugly. And so I'm going to walk you through every single day as the days are happening. I'm also going to share with you some of my most favorite podcasts and TV shows that I'm currently diving into and obsessing about right now. So you'll get a little taste of that and you'll kind of get a taste of what my day looks like in terms of what happens in the morning when I'm not working and what happens when I shut things down. Now, total disclaimer, don't get excited. My life is pretty simple, not at all glamorous, but I kind of like it that way. So I'm not gonna wow you with a bunch of crazy stuff I do after work. However, I am gonna show you what it all looks like because that's my promise to you in this episode. Now, before we get started, this episode is brought to you by my program, Courses That Convert. Now, if you've been thinking about creating a digital course for a while now, you might have this great idea for a course or no idea at all, but you're thinking, I really want to create something that I could sell digitally, or maybe you even have an awesome outline already planned for a digital course, but you're not really sure where to start. Well, then I want to invite you to my free masterclass. It's called How to Confidently Create Your First Profitable Course in 60 days. It's all about what it looks like to put together a digital course. I've been creating digital courses in my business since 2010. I've learned a few things along the way, and I have a bunch of examples to share with you in terms of what works and what doesn't work. And I'll help you really understand how to get started. So all you need to do is go to amyporterfield.com forward slash free, amyporterfield.com forward slash free, and you can sign up for my masterclass right away. I cannot wait for you to grab your spot. I promise you're going to love it. Okay, I won't make you wait any longer. Let's jump into this very different episode, and I'm going to start with Sunday night. Here we go. 
Okay, it's Sunday evening, and I had a great Sunday with my family, but now it's time to prepare for the week. So every Sunday night, I go into my home office, and for about 20 minutes, I just review my full focus planner for the week. So I look at what's coming up. I make sure that I'm prepared for any meetings I have or interviews that I might do for other people's podcasts. I just look at the week overall. Now, my goal is to look at the week and find the white space. So where do I have some downtime? Where can I take some breathing room to not be working, but just kind of quiet my mind? And to be quite honest, this week doesn't have a lot of white space. So right away, I look at the week and I think, oh, I might have packed on too much, which is pretty normal for me, which means I have to go back in there and kind of find some space where... I can breathe a little bit, but when I'm looking at the week ahead, it's very content creation heavy, which is not all my weeks, but there's a lot of weeks that I'm just creating content. So here's the deal. We recently did an audit of my webinars that convert program, and we found that a lot of the people that buy the program don't yet have anything to sell on the webinar. And in order for me to make this program incredibly profitable for them, I need to fix that problem. And so we came up with a solution that I am going to create a bonus called the webinar pre-sell plan. And this webinar will teach my students how to create an online live workshop that they sell on the webinar, but then they deliver after the webinar. So they deliver this live online workshop, let's say for six weeks, week after week to their brand new paying students. So that's my plan. I think it's going to be four videos in one training and I have to build out all the slide decks this week and I wanna get it all recorded. I don't know if that's going to be possible. We'll see how it goes because I also need to work on re-engineering the webinars that convert masterclass, the actual webinar that sells my program. I'm going to add new testimonials. I have to add in this new bonus I'm working on. So there's a lot of things around webinars that convert that I'm working on this week. Plus I've got meetings and interviews and all that good stuff. So we'll see how it goes, but here's my goal for the week. And this is typically what I'll do on a Sunday night. I'll say, okay, what do I want to happen in this week? I definitely want to finish this bonus and I want to rework the webinar. I want to be done with that so I can move on to other stuff that I would love to work on in my business before the end of the year. So that's my number one goal work-wise, but I also want time with Hobie and Cade this week. Like I said, I want a little breathing room and I want to get three workouts in. I want to go into my sauna three times. I'm sure I'll talk about the sauna later this week as we go by day by day. And I want to stay away from gluten and sugar. I recently went to a naturopath and I realized that gluten just wrecks havoc on my body. And I've been struggling with having energy every day, like the amount of energy I think I should have. And so I recently gave up gluten and that energy came back within about 30 days. So I want to stay on that track of staying away from gluten and sugar. I just feel better and I can get more done. So personally and professionally, those are my goals, nothing earth shattering. They're just exactly what I need to end the week and say, okay, this was a good week. I'm really excited. So Also on Sunday nights, I look at Monday, like what is my plan for Monday? And I get clear on the three things I'm going to work on. So for tomorrow, I'm going to work on the slide decks for this bonus. I have a team meeting with Chloe and my business partner, and I have an interview I'm doing for somebody else's podcast. Those are the three things I'm working on. Plus, if I get everything done and have a little extra time, see, this is where I fill up that white space with extra stuff. I really do need to review some emails that were written by my copyright for my podcast. There's six of them because we batch everything. So if I could sit down, it takes me about 30 minutes max reading over the emails, offering any edits that I see fit, and then I could move on to the next day. So anyway, I've got a jam-packed day tomorrow. Crossing my fingers, it goes as planned. I'll see you in the morning. Bye for now. Happy Monday. I'm going to tell you right from the get-go, I am a morning person. You're going to hear way more excitement and energy in my morning sessions with you this week versus my evening sessions. I'm pretty good up until around 2, 2.30 in the afternoon, and then I kind of lose focus and I 
run out of steam. And so I do most of my best stuff early in the morning. So right now it is 9 a.m. and I've been up since 6 a.m. My dog Scout pretty much wakes up every morning at 6 a.m. and I usually am the person to get out of bed with him. So I'm going to tell you what I've done from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then I'm going to tell you about my day. So When I get up at 6 a.m., I jump into what the full focus planner calls your morning ritual. And this is something that I built out way in advance, and I try to do every morning, Monday through Friday. Let's just have this huge disclaimer that I am not perfect at any of this. I do the best I can. Some days I hit it out of the park. Other days I completely fail, which you'll probably hear this week as I record each of my daily sessions. But let's just I'll have it be known that I am not perfect at any of this, but here's what my morning ritual looks like. And this is what I strive for every morning. So if I'm up out of bed at 6 AM, I take the dog out and then I usually have water with lemon. This is going to feel very silly. I'm giving you all these personal details, but I did promise a week in the life of my business. And this is how it starts. So water with lemon, and then I have some coffee, and then I take Scout for a walk. Now, if he doesn't get a walk in the morning, he starts to whine and cry, but only with me, of course. He would never do that with Hobie, but with me, he gets away with it because I'm a big softie with him. So we go on about a 30 minute walk in the morning. I love it. I listen to podcasts. Okay. I got to tell you about a podcast that I'm obsessed with. It has nothing to do with work. It's called Dirty John and it is so good. If you like Dateline or mystery type shows or like real crime, you're going to be obsessed with this podcast called Dirty John. And shout out to my community manager, Lindsay. She is the one who got me turned on to it. Absolutely love it. So this morning when I took Scout on a walk, that's what I listened to. Sometimes I listen to business podcasts. Sometimes I don't. I'm just telling you about this morning. It is a good day in my world if I'm not rushed in the morning. And I actually have until 9 a.m. I don't start work till 9 a.m. So if I wake up early, I can ease into my morning. Now, I work out with a personal trainer. His name is Jeff McMahon. And I'll link to Jeff in the show notes. If you're interested in this whole virtual training thing, it's pretty cool. So today was a training day. So that means at 8 o'clock, I put on my workout clothes, walked out to my garage where I've got all my weights and and my fitness ball and all that good stuff. And Jeff and I did a 30 minute workout, just 30 minutes in my world. If I focus more on eating clean and eating well for my body, I don't do tons of workout about three to four times a week. I'll work out with Jeff, but it's only for 30 minutes, but he pretty much pushes me pretty hard. If you ask me, like we get that workout in, but then we're done. And so once I work out with Jeff, I jump in the shower, get ready for the day. And by getting ready, it might mean like today, yoga pants and a sweatshirt, and I am good to go. Now, I do need to tell you that because my husband's a firefighter, he works 24 hours on and then 24 hours off, and then he gets a bunch of days off during the month. Firefighters have the best schedule in the whole world. They earn it, but their schedule is pretty amazing. And so today, Hobie's at the fire station and Cade's at school. So it's just me throughout the entire day. Well, me and Scout, which I know that some of you that work from home that hear that with a bunch of kids at home think you are so lucky, Amy. And I know I am very lucky that I get a lot of quiet time, which I need. So I'm not going to go into our co-working space today. My team is there working away. I am staying home because as I told you yesterday, my big three includes creating an entire training slide deck, actually four different slide decks for my webinars that convert pre sell webinar plan. And so I need some quiet time to really work on that. So that's going to be the biggest thing I do today. But before I get there, let me tell you about my workday startup ritual. Because every morning I've got a morning ritual, which I just took you through. And I also at 9 a.m. have a workday startup ritual, which would be about right now. And this is what I do. One, I review all the goals that I've set for myself in advance. Again, I use the Full Focus Planner. I swear Full Focus Planner should have sponsored this entire episode because I'm going to mention it a lot. But I have all my goals in there, personal and business. So it takes me less than five minutes. I just flip through my goals to remind myself of where I'm going. And then I also review my big three that I did the night before, which you heard last night, Sunday night. 
And then I also go through my calendar. I try not to have a lot of meetings. I hate meetings. However, they're essential to run the business, so I try to keep them at a minimum. So today, as you know, if you heard my last night's session, I have a one o'clock team meeting and a 3 p.m. interview for somebody else's podcast. And if I can fit it in at 4 p.m., I'm going to review some emails for my podcast episodes coming up. And from there, inside of my workday startup ritual, I also try to get to inbox zero, Asana zero, Asana is our project management tool, and Slack zero. So I look at all the communications and I try to get all of that down to zero. And then with the time left, I get on social media. Now, my workday startup ritual It's usually from 30 to 45 minutes. And because I just allow myself that chunk of time, that means I can't go down the social media rabbit hole. Let's say I only have 15, 20 minutes left in my startup ritual. Well, then that's all I've got for the social. So that always happens last. But I'm addicted to watching Instagram stories. I love them, everything about them. So I watch a lot of Instagram stories. I jump on Facebook. I jump on Instagram in general, and I just see what everyone's doing. And I likely won't post. We usually have my team helping me out with that. It's more so I'm just seeing what everyone else is up to and communicating with people, engaging, all that good stuff. So that's what my workday startup ritual looks like every morning, Monday through Friday. So I just wanted to kind of set the scene there. I won't do this every morning. Now you know my morning ritual and you know my workday startup ritual. Every morning it's the same. And so what I want to talk to you about a little bit is about how the day is going to unfold. So I will definitely spend the bulk of my day on the WTC bonus I'm working on, and I'll do all of that first because I'm best in the morning, most energy, most focus right now. I'm going to get into that right away. Now, of course, I'll take some breaks. I'll probably check in with Chloe, my project manager, since she's at the co-working space with our team. And if I want to take another walk with Scout, I will do so. But since the boys aren't home today, it's just me. So I'll probably work pretty hard today because the WTC bonus is going to take me a while. So that's what my day looks like. We'll see how it goes. I will be checking in around 5 p.m. this evening and let you know how the day went and what worked and what didn't. So I'll see you soon. Well, hello there. It is Monday evening. I'm wrapping up my work day. And as promised, I said I would jump back on and let you know how the day went. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So before I jumped on with you, I thought, okay, let me just look at the day. How did this go? And overall, I got a lot done. I didn't get everything done. So we'll talk about that in a second. But I got a lot done in terms of the bonus training I'm putting together for webinars that convert. I had my team call, I did the interview. And I reviewed those podcast emails I said I was going to review. So all of that got done. And I think the biggest win for the day is because Hobie was at work and Cade was at school and then had football. So he's not even going to be home for another hour or so. I had this huge chunk of time to stay really focused. And sometimes I get distracted or sometimes I just want to sit on the couch and watch TV, let's be honest. Or sometimes I just can't get into it. But most of the time when I'm creating content, I can get pretty focused. And that's what happened from about 9 a.m., well, 9.30 after I did my morning startup, from about 9.30 till 1, I went pretty hard on those slide decks for the training. My goal was to get all four completed. So just to let you kind of know of my process, that bonus in particular, I didn't have to start from scratch. Inside of my Courses That Convert program, I created this bonus around pre-selling your course. It wasn't about pre-selling your course with webinars. It was more of a general promotional strategy of pre-selling your course before you actually create it. So that was inside Courses That Convert. But inside Webinars That Convert, we had realized that there was this challenge that a lot of people that were signing up for my webinar webinars course, they might not have been in my courses course. So they just had my webinars course and they didn't have anything to sell. 
And I thought that if someone bought my webinars course, they're ready to sell probably a digital course or a live workshop or something. But a lot of them gave me feedback that they don't have anything to sell. So this was a huge opportunity for me to add a very valuable bonus to the program. And so that's how this bonus came about. But I already had some content I could pull from my other course. So here's the deal. This is kind of hard to explain, but I had to go into the courses that convert bonus that I already created around pre-selling a course. And I pulled some of the fundamental elements out of that one. Some of like the key principles and lessons I wanted to teach inside this new bonus. But then I took that content and I had to apply it to webinars specifically. So if webinars is all you've got, you don't have any one of my other courses and you want to pre-sell something, well, then I'm going to teach you how to pre-sell a live online workshop. And so I had to talk about how to set that up in advance, how to sell it on a webinar and how to deliver it after your webinar is over. So I had to make it very specific to webinars. So some of the content overlaps, which I talk about content a lot, so I'll just bring it up here. That's okay. It's okay if some of your content overlaps from the courses you create and the freebies you create and your podcasts and blog posts and all that, but really the magic happens, and this is why I think I'm really good at content creation, this is my sweet spot, is that I can apply it to a very specific strategy. So I took all the stuff I know about pre-selling a course and I morphed it into pre-selling a live online workshop with only a webinar. So that's what took me so long today. I really had to get the flow and I had to figure out what are the steps to make this happen? How can I make it very actionable so that my webinars that convert students can apply this right away? So that's why I need quiet time and I need to just play around with the content inside the slide decks. And like I said, I got three out of four done. So I've got one more to do, which is how to deliver this live workshop after you sell it on a webinar. So what I'll do is I'll send those three that I did do to my team. And in the meantime, while I'm working on the fourth, probably tomorrow, I have to look at what that's going to look like when I'm working on the fourth one, my team can be editing the ones I've already created. So that's just a little snapshot of my course creation process because that was a big part of today. And then, like I said, I had the meetings and I reviewed six podcast emails. Now, I'm going to tell you something really quick about that, and then I'm going to tell you how I get ready for the next day. So these six podcast emails, there's six of them because we started mega batching, which I talked about in an episode a few weeks ago. So I'll link to that episode in the show notes. But basically, because we mega batch, my team can deliver me six emails that we send out to our list week after week about specific podcast episodes. They can show me six and say, okay, me review these six. Now, something new we're trying is I actually hired a really amazing copywriter to write my podcast emails to my list. It's a little bit more expensive than normally what I would do, meaning I don't typically hire a copywriter to work on my weekly content emails, but I wanted to see if we can get those open open rates higher and those click through rates in the emails higher. And my copywriter, Ry Schwartz just had a baby. So he's taking some time with his new family and he suggested I work with a woman named Tarzan K. Yes. Her name is Tarzan. Isn't that so cool? So Tarzan came into our world a few months ago and we've been working on some random projects with her and she's been amazing. So if you get my weekly podcast emails, the last few weeks have been Tarzan and Tarzan interviews me. I tell her what I want to talk about in the emails. She kind of pulls some stories out of me and then she crafts these beautiful emails for my weekly podcast episodes. And I was reviewing some of them tonight and she did one where we talked about planning for the new year. And so by the time this episode comes out, you all will have already had access to that episode, but we were planning for the new year. She wrote an email about it that linked to the podcast episode. And she said, include a really fun image. Like you and Chloe need to go to office Depot, get all the supplies ready for your own planning session, take some snapshots. And we did that. And she put it into the email and it just changed 
everything about the email. It was more fun, more engaging, more personal. And so I want to do more of that. When I saw this example come through tonight, I thought, oh, Tarzan, you're totally onto something. This was a lot of fun. Let's take some more candid snapshots of how we do stuff in our business and start adding those to our emails. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that in my coming weekly emails that announce my new podcast episodes. So the emails were amazing. I didn't even have to change anything. That was easy. And now I'm shutting things down. Now, when I shut things down, that means I actually plan for the next day. So let me tell you what that looks like. So at the end of each day, I do this thing called a workday shutdown ritual, and it goes for about 30 minutes. And this is what it includes. I try to get my inbox, Asana, and Slack back to zero. I say try because I got to be really honest. I'm very very bad at email in terms of getting it to inbox zero, but I'm always attempting to do so. And I have a system, so I should be able to stick with it, but like one or two days of not sticking to it. And I feel like it's gotten crazy again, but it is always my mission to get that to zero as well as Asana and Slack. And then I identify my big three for tomorrow. So I'm just going to tell you what the big three look like for tomorrow. Then when I jump in tomorrow morning, you'll know what I'm working on and I can get into some more details. But tomorrow morning, I have a call with my coach. Her name is Mary Hyatt. I know I'm like in bed with the Hyatts. I know, I know, but I love Michael's planner. I coach with his daughter, Mary. I'll tell you about that tomorrow, but I've got a call with my coach, Mary, and then I am doing a batching meeting with Gina and Gina works on the content with me for this podcast. And so remember, I told you all about mega batching. Well, the batch three meeting tomorrow is meeting one. We do three meetings for batching a podcast. Meeting one is to come up with six topics. Meeting two is for me to review the outlines Gina worked on for all six topics. And then meeting three is just me alone in the studio recording all six episodes. So this is a new batch and it's meeting one. So I'll go into my co-working space called Common Grounds and it's in Carlsbad. I'll link to that in the show notes as well for all my local friends. And I'll go into our co-working space. My whole team is there, but I'm just going to meet with Gina in one of the conference rooms for three hours. So we go over coming up with topics for a good three hours. I'll tell you tomorrow more about what that looks like, but that's going to be the bulk of my day. And then because I'm at the co-working space, I'm going to meet with my team about a few different topics. So I've got some in-person meetings with the team and just spending a little time with them. So that's what my day looks like tomorrow. Hobie is home tomorrow, which makes it a little tough to be away from the house. I'll talk about that tomorrow as well. But anyway, that's what my day looks like. So back to my workday shutdown ritual, I got everything to zero. Now I just identified my big three for tomorrow, which I did with you here. I look at my calendar. So just to make sure there's no random meetings that I might have forgotten about, but the calendar looks clear. And then I'm good to go. So again, I spend about 30 minutes in my shutdown and I might need to communicate with my team about some things and I'll do that at this time. And then I'm done for the day. Now, I will tell you that sometimes I want to jump back in and work on some other stuff, especially if Hobie's not home, but I'm really trying not to. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go eat dinner. And then I'm going to take Scout on another walk with my mom. My mom lives about five minutes from here, and I wish I saw her more. I think I'm working too much, and I don't spend enough time with her. So I'm going to make time for my mom tonight. So that's what I'm doing, and we'll take our dogs for a walk and spend some time together. So easy night, easy day. So there you have it, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye for now. Hey there, welcome to my Tuesday morning. It's around 9 a.m. So I've already gone through my morning ritual and I'm just sitting down at my desk to do my morning startup ritual to get work going. And so here's how the mornings look so far. I took Scout for a walk, of course, and the podcast I listened to today was a little bit different than yesterday. Yesterday, as you know, I listened to Dirty John, so good. I'm still listening to it. But today I listened to Perpetual Traffic by Digital Marketer, and there's so many good episodes in there. I feel like they get really tactical, which I love. And so I probably listened to two and a half episodes while on my walk. Love that podcast. 
Okay, so I'm not working out today. And also today, Hobie is home from the fire station, which actually means two things. Number one, he can help with Cade picking him up from football and getting him dinner tonight, which is always helpful. And two, I want to find time to spend with him because when Hobie's home, it's really important to him that I spend a little time not working and of course, just hanging out with him. And I get it. I want to do that as well. However, I kind of scheduled things in a way that's going to make that really difficult. So today, and you already know this because I gave you an update last night, I'm going into my co-working space and spending three hours with Gina, who I work on this podcast with, and we're going to batch topics. And I'll tell you about that in a moment, what that looks like, but that means that I'm leaving the house. And then after that, I'm meeting with my team. And so I'm going to be gone for a while. And truth be told, that frustrates Toby. He says, why do you have to go away to the co-working space when I'm home? Why don't you go when I'm not here? And ideally that is the situation. But as you likely know, being an entrepreneur, and if you have a family and friends and kids and dogs and all that good stuff, it doesn't always work out as planned. And so, because I'm not the only one making these meetings and Gina has to show up and she has a family as well. This was the only day we could do it. So I'm bummed that Hobie's going to be home and I'm going to be away from the house today, but that just happens sometimes. And he's really cool with it. He's understanding, but he does get a little bit frustrated at times and I get it. So here's the deal. I'm going to go into the co-working space. Gina and I are going to hash out some topics. Here's how it looks. We rent a conference space. I say rent, it comes free because we get the co-working space. So we get extra perks and at common grounds where I do my co-working space, they've got these beautiful conference rooms with big whiteboards and it's just perfect. So we get in there and Gina comes to the table with some ideas. I come to the table with some ideas and we get our ideas for the podcast based on questions asked in my private Facebook group, plus podcasts that each of us are listening to books that each of us are reading and just life experiences. Gina works with a lot of clients one-on-one and she helps them actually create their course. And so she gets a lot of great material we can work with being in the trenches with people like that. And then of course I get to meet people at events and networking uh, situations. So I get a lot of ideas from that as well. So we come to the table with all of our ideas and we hash it out. The reason it takes three hours is because we actually think of stories and examples and the actual lessons. So what will happen is we'll hash out each of the episodes and then Gina will leave and on her own time, she will build out six really detailed outlines. And then we come back together maybe let's say a week later, and then we go over the outlines together. I ask her questions. I talk about how we can move things around to make it a better flow, whatever that might be. So I'm really, really involved, but I don't have to do it all myself. So that's going to happen today. And then as you know, I'm going to spend some time with my team. So I have an idea brewing for a two hour live workshop that I want to promote and sell for maybe January. I don't know yet. And I don't want to get into two particulars in case I decide not to do it, but I will say that I've got this fun idea brewing and I know that it's a good idea because everyone I tell about it, they're like, you've got to do it. So I feel like this is what my audience wants. And I love the idea that it's live. I do it online and it's two hours and we literally get in the trenches and we get some stuff done. So, I mean, me and the audience that I'm going to attract to this workshop. So it's an idea I've got brewing and I want to talk to Chloe about it and see how we can make it work. And then I'm going to spend some time with my team in general that's at the co-working space because I don't show up there every day. So I like to have lunch with them and I like to hang out and just see how everyone's doing. Now with that, a lot of the times I could get sucked into it and spend a lot of time at the co-working space because we start thinking of ideas and what about this and what about that? And then we dive into other things and then I totally lose track of time. My goal today is to not lose track of time because I want to come home and spend some time with Hobie before Cade gets out of football. So that's my plan. Cross your fingers for me. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. It's Tuesday night. It's much later than I had planned to record this. It's almost 10 PM at night, which is my bedtime. I go to bed at around 10 PM every night. I like to get eight hours of sleep. So I'm kind of a stickler for that. The only times I stay up late is like if we have a launch going on or if Kate has homework till really late. 
I hate when that happens, but it's rare. So I'm going to bed in a moment, but I wanted to make this audio for you to wrap up the day. The day was really, really good. It went great. Gina and I had a great session together. I met with the girls in my office and we hashed out some things. And I think I'm going to do that two hour live online workshop. I want to share it with you so bad, but I just need to wait a little bit longer to get it all figured out. And so I'm excited about that. And I left there at a good time. I left there around 4.30, but my plan was to come back here and record this and kind of fill you in. However, when I got home, I thought, you know what? I got to put the computer away. I can't record right now. I'm going to spend some time with Hobie in the backyard while Scout runs around and plays because I haven't seen my husband all day. And like I said, he's home today, so I've got to make time. So we just went in the backyard, had a little snack together and hung out. And it was really, really nice. I took a snapshot. I'll put it in the show notes for you. I'm trying to take snapshots throughout the week so I could kind of show you the stuff that I'm working on. None of the pictures are going to be super exciting because I don't have the most exciting life as you've probably started to see, but I like it. It's my life and I like how simple it is. So here's the deal. Before we went to bed though, we got dinner and all that. And then Hobie and I, while Cade was doing his homework, we watched another episode of the defiant ones. Oh my gosh. Have you seen it yet? It is so incredibly well done. It's with Dr. Dre and Jimmy Ives. I think that's how you say his last name. At least that's season one of The Defiant Ones. And it's about how they got to the point where they came up with the idea of Beats by Dre. Now, I don't know anything about hip hop. I'm not going to pretend I do. However, I know a lot about Dr. Dre now, and the story is fascinating. And if you're an entrepreneur, which many of you are, it just makes you feel like you could have an idea at any age, at any stage in your entrepreneurial experience, and you never know where one thing might lead to another. So I just thought the whole thing was fascinating. I'm actually not totally done with it. I think we have one more, but I absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. The Defiant Ones, it's a four-part series on HBO, so you might have to hunt for it, but totally worth it. Okay. So we watched that tonight, but let me give you like this aha moment that I had when I was at the office and then I'm going to wrap it up. And that is that when I was at the office, I was feeling a little bit anxious after I met with Gina. So when I was with Gina, I was creating content. I was in my zone. That's where I should be spending my time all good. But then I went in to meet with Chloe and then I met with some of the other girls on my team and I just started feeling anxious. And I kind of asked myself like, what, what is this feeling? And I realized it felt like I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing, like I was wasting time. And then I looked around and I thought, spending time planning with my team is not wasting time. So I kind of sat there and thought about it for a moment and then thought about it more on my ride home today. And here's what I realized. When I'm creating content, I know I'm in the right place and doing the right thing in my business because that's where my biggest skill set is. That's where I add the most value to the business. But I'm the leader of this team and I need to act as the visionary. So spending time with my team, talking about the direction we're going and planning the new stuff that we want to do, that is essential. So that's another piece of how I work inside my team is planning and collaborating with the team. And then there's one more thing that I do and I review a lot of stuff. So because I create a lot of stuff, it goes then to my team and they edit it, they make it sound good, they make it look good. And then it comes back to me and I'm not reviewing for typos and mistakes, but I look at everything before it goes out just to make sure that the flow is there and to make sure that the content is accurate in the way that I want to put it out to all of you. And I also want to make sure that it's on brand. So both in content, messaging and aesthetics as well. So there's basically three roles I play in my business. One, the visionary, which I don't do a lot of and I'm trying to get better at. And so the leader, the visionary of the business, that means meeting with and collaborating with my team. Number two, the content creator. And I think that's where I'm most comfortable and strongest. And three, I know it's weird, but I've got to oversee the end product. And that's important to me as well. So I spend a few hours each week reviewing before stuff goes out. And so I don't know, at times I feel like, should I be doing this? Should I give it to someone else on the team? And I never want to lose track of what's actually being put out there. So no, I just feel like that is a good use of my time. So those are the three places where I spend the most time. Now, another thing that I do, I guess I'm just realizing this now as I talk to you, is that I also spend 
a lot of time in what Michael Hyatt calls front stage, where I'm doing live Q and A's. I'm making live videos on Facebook live or Instagram live or wherever. So I guess we should need to add like a fourth place of where I spend time in the business. And I can't even believe I didn't think of this before that is engaging with all of you and actually putting myself out there and making myself available through live Q and A's and any other which way that I get to interact with you guys. So I guess that would be like the four main areas of my business. I invite you to do the same, kind of look at where you spend the most time in your business, where you need to be spending time. And just by kind of figuring that out today, and it's kind of loose, I haven't really developed all that content I just shared with you, but how I spend the time in my business gives me permission to be present no matter where I am at or what I'm doing in the business, I don't have to feel like I should be doing something else. Like get clear on the roles you play and then just be present and be there. And it makes for such a better experience. So anyway, just had that little aha moment, just was thinking about it on the way home and wanted to share it with you. So there you have it. That was my day today. So tomorrow morning, I'll tell you about the three things I'm working on for Wednesday and I am going to bed. See you in the morning. Bye. It is Wednesday morning and it's around 9 a.m. And I've already done my morning ritual. I think you're getting used to this setup, right? You know what to expect each of the mornings and each of the evenings. And so today I had a workout with Jeff. So I did my workout and I have to admit, I did not want to work out today. I don't love working out and I hate to even admit that, but it's the truth. However, the fact that all I need to do is walk out to my garage and everything's set up there in Hobie's man cave, that's where I do the workout, knowing it's just 30 minutes. And I really enjoy Jeff, my trainer. So I enjoy working out with him. And then the fact that it's over in 30 minutes and I am sore, like the guy works me out well. And so once it's over, I'm always happy I do it. But that's how workouts go, right? Sometimes you don't want to do it, but then when it's over, you're like, I feel great. So This morning was one of those mornings that I'm like, I should tell him I'm not feeling well. And then I'm like, shut up, Amy, get out in the garage. So I'm glad I did it. And before I worked out, I actually took Scout for a walk. Big surprise, right? But this morning I listened to a brand new podcast I'd never listened to before called Making Oprah. Oh, so good. This is going to be my new obsession. I just know it. It's the story of how Oprah came to be back in the very beginning before she even got the talk show. And you hear from other people that were involved. You hear about the challenges she's had along the way. You hear from her directly. I mean, it's brilliant so far. I've only gotten into a few episodes, but I love it. So making Oprah, I highly recommend it. So today, because last night I didn't get time to tell you what the day looks like today, I'm going to finish the final slide deck for this pre-sale bonus I've been working on for my webinars that convert program. I'm going to get the slide deck done. I meant to do it a few days ago. I just didn't have enough time. Also, the plan is to record three of the four training videos for this pre-sale bonus. I'm not going to do all four because I know I'm just never going to have time to do it, but I want to record three. Each of them are about 20 minutes and I want to just edit them. When I edit, if I mess up in the video, I just do a big pause and then I pick up where I messed up. So when I edit, I just look for the pauses in the audio file that I'm working with. And then my assistant will actually listen to it to make sure I got all the edits. And so I can go pretty quickly through the editing process. Although I know I shouldn't be doing it. I know I should be hiring that out. I just haven't figured that part out yet. I'm also going to do an Insta Live this week with Jasmine Starr. Now, this is something that was not planned at the beginning of the week, but we've been talking about when Instagram allows two people to go on video together on Insta Live, we were going to do it. And so they recently rolled this out. And so Jasmine's like, let's do it this week. I don't like to plan anything when I'm recording videos, but this is an opportunity I don't want to pass up. Jasmine has this huge audience. I know my audience has been looking forward to me doing more live video and to do it together. I thought that would be really fun. So I'm going to do that at noon today, which means I have to do hair and makeup. Oh, you men have it so good. Let me tell you. And so I'm going to get ready for that, which will take, I don't know, 45 minutes or so just to get all cleaned up and ready to go. So that's kind of going to break up my day. Not ideal. We'll see how it goes. 
oh, and I messed up one thing. I have a nutritionist that I talk to a few times a month. And for some reason, I scheduled a call today at 10 a.m. That is a horrible time for me to do a personal call because it really cuts into my workday. It really messes with my workflow. And I try to make those meetings either on the weekend or anytime after 4 p.m. So pedicures, manicures, hairstylists, nutritionists, acupuncture, all that. I try to do all of that later in the afternoon so it doesn't cut up my day. Because if I have to drive somewhere to go to an appointment that has nothing to do with work, it just gets me off my game. So I really screwed up. I'm not sure when I had planned this meeting, but it's there. And I did it. It wasn't my assistant's fault. So I don't want to cancel on my nutritionist. So I'm going to show up. That is going to mess up my day just a little bit. We'll see how it all goes down. I'll check back with you tonight. See you soon. Well, hey there. It's Wednesday evening. And I'm just going to tell you, I am dog tired today. I think I've just pushed a little bit too hard this week to get all this content done for this bonus. And remember that white space that I was hoping to find this week? Yeah, I haven't found any of it. And so I've just been pushing myself to get the bonus done. It's so hard when you own your own business and you maybe can relate to this. You know that if you just get this project done, you could breathe a little bit easier and you could move on to the stuff that's waiting for you. But sometimes we like kill ourselves to get the project done. And I feel like this week I've been pushing myself a little too hard in terms of getting all the slide decks done and getting all the recordings and editing done. I'm sure you guys can't hear it, but it's super loud to me that Scout is in my recording studio and he's decided to scratch and scratch and scratch. I don't know what he's doing, but it's so loud, but I don't think you guys can hear it. Anyway, it's distracting to me. So, and I'm also tired, so I might be a little bit sensitive and agitated right now. (laughs) So moving on to what happened today. I did get to finish another slide deck and I recorded three videos, but I only had time to edit two. I am actively trying to hire for a content manager locally here in Carlsbad or in the surrounding areas. And it's just hard to find somebody locally, which is important to me. I want them to come to my house and I want them to come to the workspace so we can pitch and catch and work really closely. But they could definitely be helping me put together these slide decks and editing them when they're done. Right now, I'm not there, but I know if I want white space, I've got to build up this team a little bit more. I never want a big team, but I need a little extra support here. I also told you this morning that I had the opportunity to do an Insta Live with Jasmine Starr. Overall, it went well. We got great feedback, but my lighting was not good and I couldn't figure out where to put the camera because I was using a tripod that wasn't working well. So have you ever had one of those situations where lighting's bad, the camera feels funky to you, so everything feels off? Like I felt that Jasmine looked angelic. Her lighting was perfect. She looked beautiful. She's a beautiful girl, of course. And then you look at me and I look like a hot mess. I was sweating and And again, my lighting was terrible. Lindsay, my community manager said, actually, Amy, it didn't look like that. I don't know if she was just being nice or honest, but I just fell off on the Insta Live. So then, of course, for the next 20 minutes afterwards, I beat myself up like, why did you say this? Or why didn't you find better lighting or all this stuff? I have those moments, but the good thing is I could stop them pretty quickly. Like, come on, Amy, you tried something new today. The technology was not perfect. We actually lost the connection and had to jump back on. We've never used Insta Live with two people. So it all felt really awkward and uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, I did something new. And now the next time I do it, it will be a whole lot easier. So I'm going to let myself just have that and move on. And then tonight I'm going to run some errands. So now that I've finished my work day, I'm going to run out and do some errands. And truth be told, I have a personal assistant. Her name is Stacy and she works for me every Tuesday. And so every Tuesday she comes to the house. I have a list of things I need her to do, like run to the cleaners, run to get groceries, pay some bills, random stuff. Like I want to get glass on top of my, I have this industrial looking desk and I want to get glass on top of it. So she'll measure it and go figure out how to get the glass and all that stuff. Stuff that would just take me forever when I'm busy and feeling pulled in a million directions. She's been with me almost three years now. She's amazing. And so I don't have to run a bunch of errands, which is great. If I could stay organized and get her a list of stuff on Tuesday, I'm good to go. But a girl needs to run to Target sometimes. 
Can you relate? So tonight I'm going to run to Target and do some stuff that I didn't have Stacy do this week and just kind of take care of that. So I will be running some errands tonight. Again, I told you my life is not very glamorous, but it is what it is. Now, when I get back, I've got to pick up Kate from football. I'm going to get dinner on the table and then I am going to go in my sauna. I wanted to go into the sauna three times this week. This is the first time I'm getting there. Such a bummer, but I love my sauna. I did an Instagram story on it when I first got it. It's from Sunlight and Saunas. I'll link to it in the show notes if you want to check it out, but I love my sauna. It's a place I can meditate, a place I can get quiet, which I need today because I feel a little bit agitated and tired. So anyway, I'm going to take care of myself tonight. That is my goal. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I had a great night's sleep. Last night I was tired and agitated and what fixed all that was a good sauna session and a trip to Target. That could always cheer up a girl, right? So I <laughs> took care of myself last night. I'm feeling good this morning. However, it's 10 a.m. and I like to start my work day around 9 a.m. as you know by now, but here's what happened. I did my whole morning routine. Everything went well. I took Scout for a walk. I listened to the Oprah podcast, Making Oprah. That's the podcast I listened to again because it's so freaking good. And then then I came home and I had a workout session with Jeff, which went really well. My thighs are burning too much information anyway. And then Hobie came home from the fire station. And one thing my husband loves more than anything is to grab a cup of coffee with me, sit on the couch, turn the TV off and just chat and catch up, especially because we haven't seen each other for over 24 hours. So he loves that time in the morning. And because I'm so like business, 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 move forward, move forward, move forward. It's sometimes hard for me to sit in the morning and just chat with my husband. I know that sounds horrible, but sometimes it's really tough when I know I have a full day. However, you know that book, Love Languages, and how you could take a quiz and find out what your love language is? Well, Hobie's love language is the one about spending time with people. I forget the exact term that it's called, but quality time, something like that. And so I know this about my husband and I want to make sure that I give him that time. And I tend to love it once I'm sitting there and really getting into a great conversation with him. But anyway, that actually threw me off this morning. We sat, drank coffee for about 30 minutes, had a great conversation, and then I ended up getting everything else ready for the morning, running upstairs and starting my day. So I'm an hour off, but that's okay. Hobie's worth it. My marriage is worth it. And I have a business where I get to choose when I work, what I do. I forget sometimes that I am the boss. Like I do have flexibility. Sometimes I'm so rigid, regardless of the fact that I can make my own schedule. So I have to remind myself of that sometimes. Okay. So as for what I'm working on today, I am going to finally finish the pre-sale bonus training, finish recording and editing and be done with it. I have to admit, I get to a point in content creation that I'm just done. I want it off my plate. I don't want to be working on it anymore, but that's the time that you have to push through because a lot of times people don't finish stuff because they reach the point where I'm at. Like I'm done with it. I've worked on it. I've done all the fun, creative stuff with it. Now it's the stuff that I'm just like, oh, I got to get it done and over with. And that's where a lot of people are like, oh, I'll do it another day. I do not allow myself to do that because then there's always this open loop. So I'm going to push through today. I'm going to get it done and then we'll stop talking about it. <laughs> Deal. And then once I get that done, I do want to work on the webinars that convert free masterclass, adding more testimonials, some new content and adding this bonus into that automated webinar so that I can get it into evergreen again. So I've got to work on that. And then I've got the trifecta call, which is between my business partner and Chloe, my project manager. So we will have a 30 minute check-in call just to make sure everything is moving along smoothly. So that's my morning crossing my fingers. I have a great day and I'll meet you back here tonight. Bye for now. Well, Hey there, welcome back. It's Thursday evening And I'm just going to tell you that this day did not go as planned. I literally had this desire to sit on the couch and watch Real Housewives all day. Now, I didn't technically do that, although I did do it a little bit. 
I just wasn't in the mood to work today. And I'm not proud of that. I'm just going to tell you what happens in my life. Sometimes I feel anxious or overwhelmed or just like tired of the projects I'm working on. And so I don't want to do it. So I found myself just kind of being a little bit of a brat, like, oh, I don't want to do it. No, 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 no. That's kind of how I was talking to myself in my head, which is not productive. I know I snapped myself out of it for sure, but there were just moments that I thought this is going to be a big fat wasted day. And then I thought about all of you and I thought I can't jump on tonight and tell you that I did nothing today. Like I just didn't want that to happen. And it's kind of like when you're food journaling and you do not want to write that you ate that cupcake so you don't eat it. I mean, I guess you could lie and say you didn't eat it, but for being honest here, you don't want to write it down so you don't do it. Well, that's kind of what happened today. So gosh, imagine if I reported back every single day to all of you how good that accountability would be for me because I got my butt off the couch and I got my work done. So what happened was around noon or one today, I just was like burned out and didn't want to do anything. So I wanted to sit on the couch and watch Real Housewives and eat lunch. And I did that a little longer than I'd like to admit. And then I was like, okay, me, get up. You're not reporting back that you did nothing today. And so the good news is I got most of the bonus program done. Are you so sick of hearing about this bonus that I've been working on all week? Well, yeah, I'm sick of talking about it. Hence why I wanted to sit on the couch and not work on it today. But I knew I was in a crucial place where the fun, creative, innovative side of creating content was done with this bonus. I already created all the content in the slide decks. I even recorded most of it. Now it was like the final recording and editing. And that's where I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it. But that's where you have to just finish. I do not like open loops. And I know that I would have a big one if I didn't get my act together and get my butt off the couch today. So that's what I did. I'm almost done. I might have to work on it a little next week, but I'm not even going to talk to you about it anymore because I'm pretty sure you're sick of hearing about it. But I wanted to share one quick thing with you. I was on Instagram while I was... <laughs> wasting time today, not wanting to work. And I saw Tim Ferriss do a sneak peek of his book that's coming out called The Tribe of Mentors. By the time this episode airs, I'm sure it will be out. So I'll link to it in the show notes, but he gave a sneak peek and it was a quote by Rabbi Sachs. And this is what the rabbi said. The single most important distinction in life is to distinguish between an opportunity to be seized and a temptation to be resisted. Uh, this is like a great life lesson, but especially as an entrepreneur, especially a really creative entrepreneur that I'm guessing you are, where you have tons of ideas and things you want to work on. Well, what I love about this quote is that when you look at big picture, you really do need to be careful about the opportunities to be seized versus the temptations to be resisted. A lot of my entrepreneurial friends that are struggling in this space right now, which is normal, we all struggle at one point or another, they are not resisting the temptation and they were working on things that they shouldn't be working on that are just wasting their time. And so I see it every single day. Now, on a more specific level, today I also was playing around with the Evergreen webinar. Remember I said I wanted to put some new testimonials in there, update the bonus and all that good stuff. Well, I got in there and I'm like, I hate the branding. I want to change the branding of this webinar. And then I thought, oh, I could do some new examples here. I could teach this differently here. And then I had to resist the temptation. The webinar converts well. I do not have the time to change it up. That's not what today was meant to be about. It was just about updating it in small spaces spaces. And my team is waiting for me to get that done so they could put it back on Evergreen. So if I want to rework the entire Evergreen webinar, I can, but that needs to be at a later date where I book the time and actually communicate with my team. So I had to resist today in terms of dabbling with a Evergreen webinar that I should have not been touching at that level. So I just wanted to share that with you. It was kind of an aha moment for me. Okay. So here's the deal. I had a little bit of an off day. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to. I wanted to sit on the couch as I shared with you, but I did push myself forward because I didn't want to show up here and tell you I didn't do my work. So thank you for keeping me accountable. I will also tell you that tonight I'm going to have dinner with my boys and also I'm going to go to acupuncture. I do that once a week. I absolutely love it to manage stress and to have some quiet time in my head. And so every week I go to 
acupuncture usually every Thursday night. So I am on my way there right now. I cannot wait to talk to you again tomorrow morning. It's our final day of reporting. I'll see you there. We made it. We made it to the final day of the week. It is Friday morning. I'm feeling good. And again, I remind you, I'm a morning person. I think you've noticed at nighttime, I'm not as chipper or excited. So it's Friday morning and today's special because I actually have to cut my morning ritual down every Friday morning because this is the day we call video day. And every Friday I go live inside my courses that convert private Facebook group for an hour on video. So Facebook live, and I answer all of my students' questions that they've come up with throughout the week. So we troubleshoot, I answer questions. I kind of give them a little taste of stuff I'm working on if it applies to their program that they are creating. And so it's a great time for me to connect with my students. I do that in courses that convert and webinars that convert every single week, give or take a few weeks if I'm traveling or whatever might come up. Now, every other week, I also go live in my List Builders Lab private Facebook group. That program is less expensive. It doesn't come with as many perks. However, I do want to still connect with them. So something new that I've added over the last few months is I jump in live for a full hour every other Friday in that group. So today I've got all three groups. So that means three hours of live Q&A. And what we do is we actually ask for questions in advance. So Lindsay, my community manager, will jump in the groups a few days in advance and say, if you've got a question for Amy, post it below. And then she compiles all of those questions into a Google Doc for me. And if she wants to offer some insight to the question, Lindsay will add some notes. So she'll actually help me answer them in advance. And then, of course, I always leave time for live questions. But I like to get the questions in advance and get a little bit organized. So that's how we do our live Q&A on Friday video day. But the morning's cut short because I go live at 9 a.m. And so I've got to do some stuff before I go live, like a blowout at Dry Bar. This is a must, right, ladies? And so every Friday, I try to get a blowout so I don't have to do my own hair. Now, that might sound a little bit extravagant. However, I want you to hear me out here. Every Friday, I go live on video. And video is not something that comes completely natural to me. You guys know my struggles with video, right? I did an entire episode about my struggle with video. I'll link to it in the show notes. If you haven't heard it, it's only nine minutes and I talk about my weight. That's all I'll say to that because we're not going to get into that here. But because video is not the easiest thing I've ever done, I like to make it a little extra fun. So if that means every Friday morning I get a blowout so my hair looks great on video, by all means, I'm going for it. So that's my little treat to myself to start the morning off right. But my appointment is 7 a.m. at Dry Bar in Del Mar, which is about 25 minutes from my house. So I've got to start the morning early. So I leave for Dry Bar at 6.30 a.m. I get my blowout for an hour. I'm back at the house by, let's say, 8.30. I go live on video at 9 a.m. So it's a quick morning. Poor little Scouty doesn't get a walk on Friday mornings, but I always give him one later in the afternoon. After my three hours of live video, I don't do much, meaning once I'm done around 1 p.m. if I've got the three videos like I do today, I don't plan a lot of stuff afterwards. I'm tired. My mind needs a break and I start the weekend early. So I like to start the weekend off around 1 or 2 p.m. on Friday and that makes it extra fun as well. So Fridays are good days for me. They're different than everything I've done. I need a break from creating content. I need to connect with my students. I need to be front stage, as Michael Hyatt says. So that's what I'm doing today. I'll report back when it's over. See you soon. Well, we are on our final audio snippet so I could wrap up the week. First of all, thank you for going on this journey with me. I was a little bit afraid, if I'm going to be really honest, that you're going to think my week is super boring. Like, does the girl ever do anything? And just for the record, I go to wine hour with my girlfriend sometimes, and we have tickets to Hamilton, the musical in LA coming up, and Hobie and I do date night. That stuff happens, but not all the time. 
And so this was a week where I was home all week, no travel. I had a really big project I needed to get done, the bonus, which you've heard about a million times now. And I also didn't want to be running here or there doing a bunch of stuff. When I'm creating content, I do need my mornings and my evenings to be pretty simple. So I have the focus and energy during the day to actually get the content done. And I guess I just want to invite all of you to do you, do your week as as you see fit, how you want it. And I don't think we can worry about what everyone else thinks about our week. The weird thing is where it's hard for me sometimes to get vulnerable is I wouldn't worry about what other people think about my week, except for the fact that I just took you along all week and I shared stuff that I've never shared before. Nothing earth shattering, but some stuff that's kind of personal to me. And so that's where it starts to feel a little, I call it scratchy. It starts to feel a little scratchy when you share this stuff that you think people are going to think I have the most boring life. I don't for the record. I love my life and I have some stuff that I need to work on, like piling it all in to a calendar and working my buns off and feeling totally depleted at the end of the week. I don't feel depleted. It's Friday evening. I'm getting ready to go into my weekend. It's actually Friday around 2 PM. So I'm ending, like I said, early because I've done all my videos, which went well. It was fun. I got to connect with everybody. People were sharing with me that they're coming to my live event. That's at the end or early December. So it was fun to hear who was coming and all that good stuff. So I got what I needed in terms of connecting. I wanted to do that. And I think my students got what they needed in terms of connecting with the person and that's teaching them how to build their business. So that was a huge win. But at the end of the week, I could say, I don't feel totally depleted. I wish I had more white space. I did get my workouts in. If we talk about like what I said on Sunday, I wanted to get my workouts in. I did. I didn't get all three saunas in. I only did one, which is a bummer. I didn't make it a priority. I was great with no gluten and no sugar. So I feel good. My acupuncture meeting was or appointment was awesome. So that was helpful. And I got a whole heck of a lot of new content done. So overall, it's a win. I wish there was more white space. Next week, I'm going to look at my calendar and and make sure I'm going to have to literally take some stuff off the calendar to make sure there is white space. But this week, I feel pretty good. And like I mentioned earlier in the other audio segment, this was very eye-opening in terms of how I feel and how I talk about different things in my business and how I get to the end and I'm just like, I'm done with this project. That's very normal for me. So I've got to be careful in terms of not getting burned out, but actually getting it done. So many lessons I've learned along the way. And I hope you've enjoyed coming on this journey with me just to kind of come behind the curtain and see how I do stuff, how I work everything out, how I get things set up and how I get down to business. And that was my hope for this episode. I appreciate you coming on the journey with me and I cannot wait to see you again next week. Next week, episode number 192, I am going to be sharing with you the theme that I've selected for the year, the theme that I'm going to literally tattoo on my brain, say out loud every single day, share with my team. And in that episode, I share with you a quiz I took around being a business owner and the role I play in my business and how, in my mind, I pretty much failed this quiz that I should have done really well in, in terms of how I operate in my business and how I show up and what kind of leader I am. I did not do well on this quiz and I want you to take the quiz as well. So I'm going to talk about it next week and I'm going to share with you what I'm doing to get better in this area. So it's a good episode. I'm excited to share it with you. Switching gears, very different than this episode I've done here, but there you have it. Also, I'm well aware that if you're listening to this in a timely way, that this is the end of the year. Next week's episode is going to be the first one of the new year. And so I just want to thank you for listening to my podcast, allowing me to come into your world through your earbuds, hopefully every single week and share my tips, tricks, and strategies for building a business and a life that you absolutely love and are proud of. So thank you for going on this journey with me. I cannot wait to share so many new insights insights and strategies with you in the new year. So good luck in all you do, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 